All right, hello everyone, this is Char, and today I'm going to be going over the patch ideas I have for a theoretical final Splatoon 2 patch. This is not changes to make to Splatoon 3, because that's more make main weapons better orientated. This is, let's keep Splatoon 2 feeling like Splatoon 2, the armor support, special coordination, etc. But make it better. And I'm going to be starting with the major changes. We'll be first talking about Tenda Missiles. Now, Tenda Missiles basically suffers from the fact that Missiles were bad for a long time, so all the missile weapons are low points for special. So now that Nintendo has made missiles one of the best specials in the game, there's a ton of special spam for missiles. So we're toning it down. In terms of the meta, this is primarily to hurt K-Shot, 89, Foil Flingza, and V-Jet. We are toning it down for VH3 and for v Dulies as well. Even though those weapons aren't meta, they still are closer to the special spammy side. And actually, Dooley's and H3 will both be getting buffs down the line. Not that relevant to VH3, that's just how it is, but there will be buffs down the line for Dooley's. So this is, again, reducing missile spam. And I will put these little notes here. I've made these beforehand. This is another thing I think Nintendo should do with their patches, which is basically give a brief explanation of why we're seeing the changes we're doing. They do that in Overwatch. It's one of the few things I think Overwatch patch notes do very well. And I would love to see that in Splatoon 3. I doubt we'll see it, but hey, just a hope while we're there. So that's it. I don't think missiles need much severe changes. I know people have thought like, oh, maybe when they land, you build it, or maybe nerf the hitbox. I don't think they need any of that. I think the problem with missiles is just that they're way too spammable. Missiles are great for allowing teams to move in. They're fine design special, in my opinion. There's just way too many of them. So I think if we tone that down, it'll be a lot better. Fizzy, suction, splat, and torpedo, in terms of bubble blower, will do 30% less damage. We are removing the bomb bubble bomb combo because that combo is ridiculously broken. Splatoon 2 bubble blower is kind of a Splatoon 3 special and it's way too strong in this game. So they more or less have to tone it down. And I think this is the best way you could do that. We are not removing bubble combos as an option. They just require more input from a teammate or help. The threat of bubbles being able to be blown up so easily is part of what makes many of the bubble weapons way too oppressive right now. And it removes moving forward on them as an option. So if the bubbles can't be blown up as easily, they now have to be used more as shields, or you have to use them with more people to be able to blow them up. So I think it makes bubbles a bit more reasonable. Again, this is a very Splatoon 2 change. If we move Bubble Blower to Splatoon 3, where the specials can be actually good, probably not toning it down as hard. Still a little bit, though. And I'm only going to change one weapon points for special for this, which is Mach 3, because Mach 3 is a very bubble orientated weapon in terms of Fizzy can blow up the bubble in one bit, it can get a good amount of bubble blower. So because we're taking away Fizzy blowing up a single bubble, which is a big thing with Mach 3, we're gonna give it a little bit cheaper bubbles. I would have done the same thing for K Jr., but K Jr. got 10 less points for special in the last patch and 180 is too spammy. So 190 is fine for K Jr. All right, now we get into the real chonky section, which is ink armor and armor weapon diversity. Now, as I've stated before, we are not removing armor from being used. Armor is way too common and essential for the state of the game right now, and removing it would do more harm than good because this is the only special that helps your team get in rather than displaces the other team. If we have less armor and more stuff like Missile Booyah Bombers, I guarantee the game will be less fun to play, uh, unless if you're a Blaster or Charger player. We are going to still be reducing armor a little bit. We're going to be nerfing it from 6 to 5 seconds in duration. This is basically what they did with Kraken Bubbler in Splatoon 1. They toned down the duration a little bit. And it meant that while these specials were used, you had a lot less of a time frame in order to make it work. You had to be a bit more careful, and that made them a lot more fair. So that works out pretty well. On top of that, special power-up increases duration, so you can still mitigate this nerf. You can still have your six-second long armors, but it's going to cost some of your gear dependency, which is really good for the game, because then we're running less charge up. So either you're going to have armors with slightly less duration or slightly less of the armors. Either way, this is a slap on the wrist armor. It's not that big a change on its own. The real change we're going to do is making other armor weapons actually good. And that's the majority and the most important thing of this patch. Nintendo, if you watch this right now, this is the main thing I want you to change in regards to Splatoon 2. Main thing. If nothing else from this video, listen to this section. So let's start with Junior because this is the most unlikely one to happen. Junior is way too armor spammy, so we're going to make it 190p. It doesn't need to be 200. I think 190 is okay because it doesn't have that much good painting range, so it can't paint as far away. And I debated over and over if we're going to make Junior actually good or not because Junior's weapon design is pretty terrible for higher level play. Like right now it's fine for if you're 
at a lower level player, it's a great beginner weapon. But higher up, this weapon is really cancer. So, how do we make it less cancer while still allowing it to be a good noob weapon? There's no perfect solution, but the best thing I could come up with is making it have no jump RNG. <laughs> now, I know this sounds random, but with the speed buffs we've gotten to shooters, Junior is incredibly mobile on the ground. It's a weapon that doesn't want to jump because it has almost no start and end lag. So committing to a jump actually majorly slows Junior down. So jumping is essentially now a trade-off. If you jump, you get better accuracy. You can actually shoot and hit people directly with your jumps. However, you're taking away your big mobility, you're painting less because you don't have jump spread. So it's a trade-off. We give Junior the ability to fight, not as good as Zap, but a little bit better. And we're reducing its armor spam capability, so it has to fight a bit more or help more in fights. So now Junior still plays a lot into Bomb, it's still a bit special spammy, but now it's a bit more of an actual weapon and not just a special bot. Okay, up next, HD. Now, HD is not too far away from being good, so I don't want to change too much about it. So we're going to be doing two small changes, and one of them isn't even for the armor H tree. The main thing we're doing for the armor H tree is 10 less points for special, so MPU H trees can get armor a bit more reliably. You can still run non-MPU H trees, those are still fine, but we're mostly trying to make it so H tree has a bit better armor output since it is a little sore than the other supports. H tree is more of a fighter than a painter in some situations because it does have that potential one burst. So we're just giving it a little bit better supportive power. We don't need to buff its fighting power. We will be giving it 30% increased damage to bubbles, so Cherry can become a usable weapon because three bursts to break bubbles, and I mean barely break bubbles, is stupid. So that change is for Cherry admittedly. I'm just going to include it with H3 because I'm talking about H3 right now. Undercover Brella. Shield size increased by 5%. Basically, when you jump with the Undercover Brella shield, you have your feet or head exposed a little bit, and you can be sniped right over or under it. So this is to make it so the shield actually covers you and you can jump, which is actually really useful for Brellas in general. Secondly, we're giving it 50 extra shield HP. This way, Undercover can actually stall against weapons. And that's the main thing for Cunder and Sunder right now with its current kits. Again, this isn't for Splatoon 3, this is for Splatoon 2. If Splatoon 3 gives Undercover an actual burst bomb or rolled torpedo and a fighting special weapon, then maybe we change a different aspect of it. But right now... Undercovers are about stalling, so we're giving them more stalling power. Bombs will still break shields, so you still have to be careful not to show bombs. And I don't want to mess with Undercover's damage, because there could be a lot of jank slash cheese slash it'll help lower level more than it will higher level, a lot of smaller reasons. But again, this kind of depends. If Splatoon 3 goes toward making Undercover a fighting weapon and not a support, then you go with a different change. This is because it's a support. It's not a killing weapon, but you still want to get in front of people so you can stall with your shield. That's part of what makes Undercover special. So that's why we're giving it that change. We're making it fit as a support. And it also works for Sunder because Sunder likes to shield, stall, get baller, then pull up another shield, and that gives it an additional 100 shield HP total if you play it for that. 96 Gal, this is the weird one. We're giving it reliable feet painting, which every weapon should have, but 96 is really important. Basically, when you shoot, it'll link your feet better and slightly faster shot velocity, so it'll be a little bit more reliable because 96 RNG and shot velocity are both terrible, so the weapon is super unreliable as is. However, these aren't our primary buffs. We are primarily buffing Sprinkler to buff 96. And here's how we're doing Sprinkler. We are doubling its HP. We are making it so Object Shredder does not allow the shield to be one shot. It now only increases damage by 20%. I don't know why this says 25, 20%. We're making its hitbox bigger by 30%, preferably the model on Sprinkler will get better too, so we're making Sprinkler bigger. And then we're decreasing the ink consumption by 5%. So, basically, 96 really likes having a sub that can protect itself, that's why it likes wall so much. So we're making Sprinkler into a smaller wall. You can have it near you as a mini shield because we made its hitbox bigger. So Sprinkler can block stuff more reliably, it's gonna have more health, and so Sprinkler requires more resources. Nintendo isn't going to give this thing its painting buff back, because back when Sprinkler could paint, it was broken. I understand why Sprinkler is in the spot it's in, because it's very hard to bring Sprinkler into a good space. So that's why it's like that. That's completely fine. So, instead, we're making it so Sprinkler is a mini shield that can also help with paint. And this really helps 96, so it can play with an actual sub-weapon. It's still not as good as a bomb, but that's a little bit better, which will help it out a lot, especially for long-range stages. Because 96 is so close to being niche right now. It's so close. So that'll make it more niche. 
Uh, Dynamo, we're going to make its horizontal flick more consistent. Just go in the training room, do a horizontal flick, reset, and do it over and over. You will see how crazy different it is. It should be much more consistent in terms of painting a good bit. And the second change is a more experimental one, but I still think it's the right idea, which is make the flicks cancelable. We'll be doing 10 frames for the horizontal flick and 15 for the vertical. So basically, if you want a squid form in the middle of a flick rather than not doing anything, it actually will. And you'll have 10 seconds where it kind of does a little cancel animation. And then you go into squid form, 15 if it's a vertical. So it still has lag, but now you don't have to commit to a flick as hard. And the main thing this is for is all the bomb spam with LDE, which we'll get to later because that's its own problem. But this will make Dynamo actually be able to live around bombs and be a bit more mobile against stuff like chargers. It'll make it playable. That being said, that's a little drastic, so we'll be increasing points for special to 200 for all three Dynamos, so they're not too special spammy, and you actually have to use the main weapon a little bit. I think this will make Dynamo feel a million times better, because the main thing about Dynamo is just dying to bombs or dying because you're way too slow, and this will make it actually usable. And again, it bears repeating, this is for Splatoon 2, if we're doing Splatoon 3, then I'm making the vertical flick better at damage as well making it a fighter, but this is Splatoon 2. It's a support, so we're making it an actual support. Mini and Squiffer, medium to light class. Basically, Mini and Squiffer have two subs of swim and run speed by being one lower class. This makes Mini less gear dependent and a better missile support option. I'm just going to include it here because it's kind of similar. And Squiffer. Classic Squiffer is not the main one you use because it's a Slayer and Classic Squiffer is a support kit without a bomb. Sometimes you can run Classic Squiffer as the solo armor, so this will allow you to actually do that a bit more often. And then look what we have here! We now have Armor Rapid with a bit of use. We have Zap already. Now we're bringing in more Junior, more Atri, more Undercover, 96 for long range maps, Dynamo, and Squiffer. Now we have like, what, 6 to 8 armor support options now instead of two. And if you run armor rapid, it's not even really an armor support because you have to run a painting weapon with it. And most of the time you run double armor with it. We have actual armor support variety. So now the armor roll doesn't feel terrible. If you're not a shooter, you can play support now. Like it's huge. Now we have armor supports for brellas. We have armor supports for rollers. It still could use more classes in the support category, but that's what we're working with for Splatoon 2. We can hope for more supportive weapons in Splatoon 3. But now we have an actual support class, not, and Zap85. All right, and next up is K52. And you know what? We're not changing the main weapon to 52. Cry about it. We're changing Wall and Booyah Bomb. Wall and Booyah will both have 10% extra damage from Blasters, Sloshers, and Rollers, and 5% from Brellas and Dooleys. We are making it so that Wall, the main thing that keeps so many weapons from fighting 52, is not as oppressive basically making it kind of like Brella multipliers. It's nowhere near as good as how Brella shield works, but it's better there. And that's going to really help because the main thing is we have so many shooters because of 52 and because of Wall and Booyah. And Booyah is a fine design special and Wall is, uh, Wall's not great, but it's functional. So now we're making it so these are interactable with other weapon classes, which means we're making stuff like Brella's better, we're making Dooley's better, we're making Slosher's able to fight it. And now 52 has an actual matchup spread because they can't just rely on Wall all the time. Uh, additionally, later on, we'll make it 200p as well, or if you want, you could re reduce its painting range slightly, but I think painting range is honestly not the worst thing for it. It allows it to move forward. I kind of like it. It makes the main weapon better, so I, I kind of don't have a huge problem with this painting range. But we'll make it 200p so it can't output as many booyas. But that's the main thing. It's just making other weapons able to fight it, and then it can't output as much specials because it can't just exist for free in an area uncontested. That's how we fix 52. It's that simple. Just make it so the kit does not prevent almost everything from fighting it. Next up, we have Splashdown, which technically could be a minor change, but I'm putting it in Major because the special is just so bad that it ruins a lot of weapons. So here we go, Splashdown. Height can be adjusted by how long you hold the special button down. This does not make it slower to execute. Basically, you press the special button, and if you press and don't hold it, it'll go 10% lower than normal. And if you want it to go higher, you press and hold the button down a little bit, and it'll go up to 10% higher of the height it does now. Splashdown should still be cancelable. I'm not trying to take that away. We're making it so it's more of a mix-up, so you actually have to read the Splashdown user and flick instead of just relying on muscle memory. So Splashdown will be easier to not die in the air. Additionally, when the Splashdown lands, it's going to get its health restored, because sometimes Splashdown will take like 70 damage, land, 
and then someone will throw a burst bomb or shoot a blaster shot and the splashdown user will just die. The other thing to note about these changes is I'm trying to make it so this affects higher level, not lower skill brackets, because splashdown is fine in lower level skill brackets because people don't try to shoot it down. These changes are basically meant to help higher level players get splashdowns off, but not change anything in lower level. That's the point of these changes, that's why we're not doing, like, splashdown is 5 to 10 frames faster, because then we're hurting lower level where the special is already good. And with that being said, we have three changes left. We have Last Ditch Effort, because LDE gives eight subs right now, and that's way too crazy. I thought of reducing it to five, but just to make sure that we don't kill the ability, we'll reduce it to six. That is six subs of main sub and ink recovery up. That is still an incredible amount, so it's still going to be fine. I don't have a problem with LDE activating after 50 points. That's good, it makes it usable. The problem is now when it's fully activated, it's way too strong and makes bomb spam too annoying. So this will tone down bomb spam and it'll make it a little more tolerable without getting rid of it completely. Hey look, you might have to actually learn how to manage your ink tank. What a concept. Uh, custom jet, I mentioned K52 here to keep it simple, but C jet spams too many rays, so we're toning it down just like we did with V jet earlier. And then red charger, fire fin, bullet point nouveau, custom duo sweatshirt, custom expo, and L3 will go from 220 to 210p, making them a little bit better at getting specials because all of these weapons were meta at one point but aren't anymore and they're just way too high points for special. So we're toning them down a little bit so you can play those weapons a little bit more which should help out. That is all the major changes. That is what I would do if I really cared about making the game feel better. Now there are minor changes I will go over. And I'm going to talk about these only a little bit because, again, they're a lot smaller. These are good changes for the game, but they're things that are less important. Because I think right now, if we're looking at the more main weapon side of things, which is the minor changes I'm doing, then it's better to just look at it from a Splatoon 3 perspective, because it doesn't matter that much for the state of Splatoon 2 to change these main weapons. So you can do these changes, but they're not as necessary. I would more be looking for how do we change main weapons for Splatoon 3. So just to get that out of the way. That all being said, if we were to change main weapons for Splatoon 2, if Splatoon 3 was mega delayed and we had to fix main weapons in this game, here is what I would do while still keeping with Splatoon 2's game design. Ink Res, increase its effect potency by 1.5x, which will help against MPU weapons since touching ink is the main thing that allows them to kill faster, so if we have one or two subs of Ink Res stack better, then it makes MPU weapons less oppressive. Aerospray. We're going to remove the RNG when grounded instead, 190p so it's not special spammy. This is basically the inverse of Junior. Aerospray has a slower kill time so it's okay to make it on the ground and it means it has to jump to paint now. So if you want to paint really well with Arrow, you have to jump into the air, which means you are slower. So painting is a riskier option with Aerospray and fighting is a lot easier. This also serves to make Aerospray and Junior, two way too similar weapons, have more differences and make them more distinct. Umbrella increased damage from 16.2 to 16.6. We are making sure no pellet breakpoints happen. Currently, with the last Umbrella damage nerf, they made it so six pellets doesn't kill. We are keeping that the same. You will still need at least seven pellets. This makes it a little bit better, which will mostly help towards objects or long-range damage being consistently. We are reducing the ink consumption on the shots only. It is perfectly fine that the Umbrella shield itself uses 15% of your ink per second. That should cost a lot of ink, we're making the shots a bit better so it can paint a little bit more and be a little less ink hungry in terms of only shooting. The shielding efficiency is actually perfect, that should not be changed. Octobrush, we're basically doing the same thing we did with Tri-Slasher, which is making its kill time a little bit faster. Again, Splatoon 3, I would rather you just rework Octobrush to give it its two shot at close range back that it had in Splatoon 1, but if we're doing Splatoon 2 changes, it needs to have a little bit of a faster kill time, which will help it be used in modes outside of Rainmaker. Dooleys will have an ink res effect whenever they roll, so they don't get screwed over by MPU weapons. Fairly self-explanatory, just look at what you did Tank Brush. Heavy is a bit outclassed because we've given Squiffer, E-Leader, and Jet Sculpture more range with MPU, so we're giving Heavy a little bit more range, and we'll reduce the jump RNG so Heavy can jump if it absolutely needs to a little bit more reliably, which should mean this weapon actually won't be outclassed finally. Ballpoint will be increasing the potency of its long range mode. The short range mode is completely fine. 10 points less for specials I mentioned earlier, but also a bit more paint from long range mode and faster shot speed, which should help long range mode feel a lot better and more reliable. Hydra Splatling just needs to be a little bit faster. Enough said, it's close to being niche in a few places, so we're going to give it a little bit of speed. 
Blasters will be able to do actual damage to Baller and Booyah Bomb. Yes, I know this is a lot when stacked with the 10% damage increase I did earlier, but it's still kind of needed. And also it means a direct plus a close range indirect from a Blaster user will be able to kill someone with armor, meaning Blasters, while still being hard countered by armor, will actually be able to fight it without having to land two direct shots in a row. And finally, Bucket Deco to 200, please. Like, this kit is not great. Baller is bad and Sprinkler is weak, so it's there. K-Pro 200 is very similar. Kenso Pro is just a little bit outclass right now, so having it have a tiny bit better special output or paint, in this case I'm going with special output for less drasticness, will help a lot. And finally, let's let Baller climb walls diagonally so it could be a bit more mobile. Baller is a terribly designed special that you can't really make good because it's too strong of a panic button if it can kill, but it's terrible if it can't kill. This is the one change we can do that doesn't affect any of that. Hey, at least it's a little bit more mobile up walls. Yay, maybe it gives it some use. So again, all these changes here, all the way up to here, are not as necessary. And for main weapons, I'd rather focus on balancing the game for Splatoon 3. That's mostly what we're focused on. But if you were to change main weapons, this is how we would do it. But with that all being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope these patch notes made sense. Any comments, ask me below and I will get to it and thank you all so much for watching.